Hello there folks, I'm going to show you how we can replicate the look of a long lost feature in Photoshop Elements 14 called Lighting Effects. Now curiously Lighting Effects is alive and well in Photoshop CC, don't know why it's still there, um, it's actually morphed into quite a useful tool whereas Lighting Effects in Elements for the last few versions, 10, 11, 12 or what have you, has always been a bit mean, it's very small, the preview windows are tiny, so it was one of those things that if you had a lot of patience and a lot of time you could recreate quite a cool looking result but it inevitably whenever I tried it you would have to try it go okay oop, that's wrong undo try it again okay oops that's wrong and you'd have to repeat it several times until you got an effect you like what it actually does is this it creates the look of a real photographic studio for example here's my original photo I go to the render drop down menu and I choose lighting effects it allows you to kind of point a spotlight Okay, at your subject like this and you can fiddle around with it and you know make it make it a bigger or a smaller it's almost as if you have like a little bit of black cardboard around a spotlight like a snoot and then you can you can move it around and you can add as many of these as possible to highlight different parts of the image so you can see the interface is pretty good in Photoshop in elements it was pretty rubbish so what I've done is I've taken the same photo and I've loaded it into Photoshop Elements and I've made it go very grungy and dingy. The reason for that is because if it's a very bright looking picture you can't really make any other bits of the picture brighter. You just want to highlight some of the relevant parts. So purposely, and if you use just levels for example, purposely just bring the, the brightness down. You can even bring the contrast down by using the output levels. So you make it look muddy and murky. This was taken on a very wet sort of November afternoon in the middle of Hungary I think it was uh, it was a mural on the, on, the, on the side of a town hall or something so you know it came to me it was just a very underexposed grungy looking picture anyway so it certainly needs a bit of help so clearly if we use just control or command L and we use this command it's just like a global brightness isn't it using the input levels and we don't want that so we need to make a selection and so we're going to select the main figure here we're going to choose the tool options I'm going to use the elliptical marquee and I'm going to add a feathering amount that's important Okay, so I'm going to put in, you know, the question is, how much feathering? Well, it really depends on the size or the resolution of the picture. This is actually a small resolution picture. You can see under document sizes, it's only 10.8 megabytes. So I suspect it was only something like a 4 megapixel camera. So it was a while back. Still, it's one of my favorite sort of uh, pictures from that era. So how do, we, how do we fix this up? What we normally do is you apply a little bit of feathering. I'm going to put around 50 or 60. If you're shooting with a 20 megapixel camera, then you'd probably want to put 100 pixels. But the idea being is to check it out and see. Okay, so if I switch that off, just pop the tool options back down and we draw. Now look what happens here. When I let go of the marquee, it actually shrinks down in size. And that's to indicate that the feathering is active. What it means is it's just softened down. So it's actually made that delineation line, the selection line, go to the halfway mark. So it's moved 25 pixels inside because remember the selection was 50 pixels or 60. All right, if you find that it's in the wrong place, you can actually move the selection. That's pretty good. But you can't change the size and shape of the selection as you can in Photoshop CC. So if you find that uh, you've goofed and it's the wrong size, just simply press Control or command D to deselect and just draw another one. Easy peasy. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now listen, if you have created that and you go, oops, I've just forgotten to actually add the feather. You can't actually add the feathering with this slider after you've made the selection unless you go to the select menu and you attack it from that angle. So if you then choose feather there, uh, you can actually then type in a number and it will add the feathering. So it's a curious thing. So the slider at the bottom is to add feathering before you create the selection. The feathering command from the select menu is for afterwards. All right, onwards. Now, if I make a selection here and I use Control or Command L, this is what we can do. We can actually just lighten up a selected part of the image. As you can see, if I hide that selection, you can see it's a very soft, almost indistinct difference between the dark areas and the light areas and that's what feathering is all about so that works quite kind of nicely however I'm just going to cancel out of that for a moment however the problem lies is if I like that and we go ahead and we then highlight something else in the picture it's going to it's kind of lock that change into concrete so we're going to do it using a very clever little technique using an adjustment layer very simply up at the top above the layers it says create new fill or adjustment layer we click on that and we choose levels. So levels are exactly the same. 
except it's now in a thing called an adjustment layer. And you can see by the oval shape in the mask to the right of the histogram there, that is the select area. That's the area that we've selected. So now I can apply an adjustment. Okay, So it's just like using a regular selection on a regular photo, except for the fact that this is now on a layer. Now I can just probably boost the contrast a little bit here, make it a bit dramatic. Okay, And then to switch it off, you just hit the X button and it disappears. And so now you can see we've got the adjustment mask on the right hand side and the level on the left hand side. If I double click the layer thumbnail, of course levels comes back and I can get back in and make an adjustment if I want to. So I can fine tune it at any stage and go back to it again and again. So it's a very nice feature. But what is very, very useful here is this. I can then go and grab hold of my move tool and you know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to move that effect. So wherever I drop it, you can see it resets in the mask up the top here. So let's just pop it onto JC here. Very, very good. Now, what I could do is this. I could just go and make another selection. Okay, I could just make another selection around one of the angels or whatever these are, these people are, uh, and do the same, repeat the process. But an easier way is simply just to copy that layer. So we just duplicate the layer by dragging the entire layer, not the two thumbnails, but the blue part of the layer to the left or to the right of it, just drag it up and drop it onto that little um, folded paper icon there, let go. Suddenly the subject gets double exposed because of course we've got double the brightness and then use the move tool and just move one of those layers somewhere else. Let's duplicate that again. Whoops, I'll turn that off by mistake. Let's duplicate that again. Or maybe it doesn't want to be, there we go. We're going to duplicate again and move it over to there. So it's not quite the same. We don't have quite the sort of control, I suppose, but it gives a significant uh, sort of control over small areas. Now, don't forget, uh, this is a mask. This is a mask. So I'm going to, let's just say, just lighten that up a little bit like that. And because it's a mask, what it means is if I paint into the image, I can increase or decrease the mask. So we've used the selection tool to create the mask, but if I just grab a paintbrush, and I paint into here. Oh, look what's happening here. I'm painting with black paint, as you can see in the bottom left of the screen here. I've got the black color picker set. I'm painting with black paint into a mask that is white on black. So technically, if I paint black into that mask, when I let go of the mouse, that's just disappearing. And so my effect has disappeared. All right, so what I can do is this. I can go the other way around. I can paint white into my mask like that. And what it's doing is putting the mask back. And in fact, I can make the mask go even bigger. Then I can go onto the list level and I can paint a little bit more onto that one. So effectively, each of these levels is actually the entire layer, the entire photograph has been brightened. But we don't see that because we're only looking through this little hole, this oval hole that we've created. Let's go onto the main figure here and we can do something like that. So you can have hours of fun adding or subtracting. And don't forget, of course, if you make a goof and go, oh, oh dear, I've gone too much on that one, you can either, of course, go Control Z to undo, or you can press X on the keyboard, and X changes the white to the black, like that. So I'm just pressing X on the keyboard, it goes from white to black to white to black to white to black. And then I can paint back over that mask and pretend it never happened. So infinite forwards and backwards gear. Very, very good. And that is called layer masking. We deal with this later on, I think in lesson eight. So this is exactly what we can do here. We have great control. In fact, I'm going to go and try and get into this one here because this looks a little bit messy. Oops, I need to press X on the keyboard and lighten her up a bit. And again, it's going too quick. So I'm going to choose my tool options and bring the opacity down to like 20%. There we go. Much softer, much slower effect. And you can see it's a little bit more gentle on that layer. In fact, I've got on the wrong layer here, but it's going to work. There we go. Have fun.